Hi everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I have the perfect recipe to brighten up the winter months. This is my crystallized Meyer lemon bundt cake. You could make it with regular lemons, but Meyer lemons are kind of like a spicier, slightly sweeter lemon. The recipe is so easy, but I think it's a really special version of lemon cake. I'm gonna show you how to make it. The other night, Harris and I were cooking, making dinner or whatever, I don't remember, and he just out of the blue was like, I can't believe lemons come from nature. Like, the flavor is, it's so tart, it's so piercing, it's really one of my favorite flavors to use in both cooking and baking. And Meyer lemons are something that have become a lot more available in the last several years. It's a hybrid of like a mandarin and a lemon. I can't think of a better way to show it off than a super moist, this is an olive oil based bun cake. The crystallized part is because I make this really lemony glaze that goes on top. But instead of using powdered sugar, which is kind of the standard glaze sugar, I use granulated sugar. And what happens is not all of the granulated sugar dissolves in the liquid and you get this like crystallized, slightly crunchy, sparkly almost finish on the cake and it looks so pretty. It has really straightforward ingredients, but you taste it and I think it's like, it's extra special. So I'm really excited to show it to you. I've made it several times already this winter. It's just so good and so easy. Ingredients. This is all super straightforward stuff you probably already have in your pantry, except for the Meyer lemon. So I'm gonna use olive oil. It's an olive oil based cake. I have all purpose flour, baking powder, kosher salt, and baking soda. I have three quarters of a cup of fresh squeezed Meyer lemon juice. I just squeezed this. Plus I have a tablespoon of the finely grated zest. Pro tip, zest the lemons before you juice them. It'll be much easier. A cup of whole milk, some vanilla extract, four large eggs, and some granulated sugar, which I have divided because some of it goes in the glaze, some of it goes in the cake. And then special equipment. I have just a standard 12 cup bunt pan. This is like the classic one. You could really use any shape, but just know that the more intricate your bunt pan, the higher the possibility that things will stick. So I like just kind of the classic. I have a little bit of extra flour and some butter for the pan. Generally speaking, I liked whatever fat is in the recipe is what I like to use for the pan. But when it comes to a bunt pan, I almost always use butter because butter, unlike olive oil, is I can apply in a thick layer and you really need that kind of like extra greasing power of butter when it comes to a bun pan because of all the grooves. So it's just gonna work better as like a nonstick coating. And then I am using a hand mixer. Make sure you have a skewer. I'm gonna grab one of those or a toothpick for poking holes too. This cake follows a very simple method that will be familiar to anyone that's made an oil-based cake before. We're gonna mix the wet, mix the dry, Mix the batter. I have my three cups of all-purpose flour here. I'm gonna add my salt, baking soda, half teaspoon of soda, and two and a half teaspoons of powder. It's not practical to add a ton of lemon juice into the batter because it's going to turn the batter so acidic that you're gonna have all sorts of problem with leavening. This recipe has a quarter cup of Meyer lemon juice in the batter itself plus zest. So zest is really a more effective way to get lemon or citrus flavor in general into a cake because it's not going to dramatically change the acidity of the batter. But that's one of the reasons why I'm using milk as the sort of liquid ingredient because it's not acidic. So the dry ingredients, I have both baking powder and baking soda because I'm adding lemon juice to the batter. It's going to make it acidic and I want that soda to react with the acidity from the lemon juice and it's gonna like lighten the cake and then I have the baking powder to leaven it as well. I'm gonna set that off to the side. And now I'm gonna do my liquid ingredients. So I have a cup of milk here. I'm kind of like making my own version of buttermilk by adding lemon juice to the milk. So I have three quarters of a cup of fresh squeezed Meyer lemon juice. I'm gonna add a quarter cup to the milk. Now, if you are making this with regular lemon, which you absolutely can, just like any old grocery store lemon, you're gonna add two tablespoons to this rather than a quarter cup, just FYI. The rest of it is the same. It's probably going to curdle a little bit. That's very normal. Don't worry about that. It won't affect the cake. So you can see that that's already happening here. Yeah, I mean, it looks kind of gross, but no worries. My other liquid ingredient is just some vanilla extract. So that's my liquid ingredients. I'm gonna set that off to the side as well. I have my bundt cake and I just smeared in the bottom of the bundt cake some butter. 
if the butter isn't room temp, I like to just like break it up into little bits and put it in the bottom of the pan because making it smaller is gonna help it come to room temperature faster. So I want to coat every single surface of this bunt pan, including the center tube with room temperature butter. If I'm making an olive oil cake, I'll often just, if it's like a loaf cake, for example, I will grease the pan with the olive oil because it's just the fat that I'm already using. In the case of a bunt cake, you really need a thicker layer to help release the cake so butter is more effective because room temperature butter, you can spread pretty thickly. So I have an even layer of butter all over on every single surface. Then I have some flour here, an extra kind of insurance policy. And the flour is going to adhere to the butter and it's just going to create like an extra kind of nonstick coating. And one thing I like to do is really like tap the pan on the countertop. I don't want to make a loud noise, so I put a towel down. It also shows you if you got any, if you missed any spots with butter, like right there, I missed a spot. Make sure you get all over the inside tube. And then once you have everything coated, I'm gonna tap out the excess flour and I just do it right into the garbage can. And here is my prepared bun pan. So that's really important. Do this before you start mixing the batter. You do not wanna have to wait to prepare the pan once the batter is done. In the recipe it has, you combine the eggs and sugar and zest all together, but there is kind of one little minor bonus step if you're interested. And if I'm interested. You're interested, you're Minnie. Interested. Okay, great. And Cal, everyone's interested. And you've probably seen me do this before if you've watched other episodes where I make like a lemon or a citrus dessert, but I'm going to massage the sugar and the zest together, pinching it between my fingers and working the zest into the sugar. And this is gonna release tons of flavor. I like can smell the Meyer lemon flavor already. I'm gonna crack my eggs into the bowl. Now when you're making an oil-based cake, it's different from a butter-based cake because oil is liquid at room temperature and so you don't have the option of doing that step where you're creaming together the fat and the sugar. It's not gonna hold air the way that butter does. So I start with the eggs and the sugar rather than the fat and the sugar because that will whip up. So it's a way to incorporate air into the batter that's called mechanical leavening rather than chemical leavening. Now we'll just help to lighten the cake a little bit. So I'm gonna to start to mix this together. Just start on low to incorporate everything and then increase to high. So I'm gonna beat this together on high speed and it's going to become pale and it's going to gain a lot of air and volume. This bowl is not big enough, I'll tell you that right now. Okay, so this is looking good. It's just been a minute or two. And it's nice and thick, and it's kind of holding the marks of the whisk. I'm just gonna slowly stream in the oil so it is going to incorporate really smoothly, and it's gonna thicken a little bit. So if you ever made mayonnaise where you whisked oil into yolks, that's what's gonna happen here, but of course I have sugar added. So pour slowly because you don't wanna overwhelm the egg mixture. I definitely need a bigger bowl. We're gonna need a bigger bowl. It kind of looks like, it has kind of a mayo type consistency. Batter, almost done. We're just gonna add our wet and dry ingredients, but alternating and starting and ending with dry. Add about a third of the dry. Now I'm gonna add about half of that like not very appealing looking curdly liquid. Not gonna make any difference in the final cake. When that's incorporated, half of the remaining flour, which is about a third of the total, this is such an incredibly tender cake. It has the best texture. Now I'm gonna add the remaining liquid. Does this have to be a bunt cake? You could make such a nice layer cake out of this. You could divide this batter between three eight inch cake pans and make an incredible lemon layer cake. So I just added the rest of my dry ingredients. You could also divide it between two loaf pans and make two like lemon loaves, that would be great. I'm really at the top of the bowl here. Okay, so I'm gonna stop mixing just shy of the point where everything is totally incorporated. I like to do the last bit of mixing by hand, always with every cake. So I have my spatula here. I just barely made it in this bowl. Use a bigger bowl. I just like to give it a final mix. One of the advantages of a, of a hand mixer is that you can kind of get down to the bottom of the bowl and there's fewer dead zones because you can really move it around. So it's well incorporated. Now I'm just gonna pour it into my prepared pan. You can see that it's making bubbles because of that baking soda that's in there. And it's a relatively liquid batter, so you don't need to even really do like a lot of evening out of the batter and smoothing. Just kind of settles on its own. Scrape out the bowl. 
And because of that baking soda and the juice in here, you do want to get this batter into the oven relatively quickly. It's not the kind of thing where you want to let it sit, you know, for an hour in the pan or something before you put it in the oven. The hard part's done. It's super simple. It's going to bake until the top is like really risen and cracked and golden brown. And we're going to put a cake tester in the tallest part of the cake and just check for doneness. Are you getting my, my socks with sandals in any of these shots? Don't look at them. Don't look at them. <laughs> For the glaze, it's just all of those remaining ingredients, lemon juice, olive oil, and sugar. So the olive oil is there because when you bake an olive oil cake, a lot of that sort of fresh, bright, like vegetal flavor of the olive oil dissipates and kind of disappears. So I like to add some of it to the glaze because then it's uncooked and you, you get like that sort of really like grassy, I mean, whatever the flavors of the olive oil are, you're gonna get that more upfront. And then of course I have a full half cup of lemon juice. It doesn't really work to add a lot of lemon juice to the batter, but why not add it after baking and have it be this like delicious soak that's gonna permeate the cake and give it so much brightness. Like I like my lemon desserts to be very lemony and very tart, so that's what this is gonna add. And then of course the granulated sugar, like I said, it's going to partially dissolve, but also sort of crystallize around the outside of the cake. So this is all just gonna mix together. I, I wanna give a sh particular shout out right now. I wanna give a shout out to Flow Breaker. One of her famous recipes is a, I think it's a, like a crystal almond pound cake, something like that. It, that's, those are the, kind of the words in the title. And she uses this glazing technique. So this was inspired by, and this technique was kind of borrowed from Flow Breaker to use this granulated sugar. So that's the whole glaze. I have my pastry brush here, which I'm gonna use for glazing when it comes out of the oven. And one way to really lock in a lot of moisture and to encourage the cake to absorb the glaze is to glaze it while it's hot. So I just need to wait for the cake to be done. That can just kind of sit there. We'll come back and glaze it. My 40 minute timer just went off, so I'm gonna test the cake. It's smelling kind of done. So I'm gonna pull it out and I have my cake tester. So when you test the cake, you wanna test in the tallest part of the cake, which in a bunt pan is usually like the cracked area, I guess I should say. Came out clean, this looks great. Actually hear it, can you hear it? Little bubbles popping. So I'm gonna let this rest for just a few minutes. Hopefully you'll see the cake kind of naturally start to pull away from the sides of the pan as it should. But I like to often just kind of get in there with my offset spatula to help loosen it a little bit. But this is not you know, even though bunt pans are sometimes known for sticking, this cake is generally not one that is gonna be prone to sticking. So while the cake is hot, I'm going to glaze first the top of the cake, which actually then becomes the bottom. So I'm gonna glaze this, let it rest a little bit, and then turn around and finish glazing every other surface of the cake. This is kind of a big skewer. You can use a toothpick. I would just use something a little bit bigger than this. So I'm gonna go ahead and gently poke holes all over the surface. In some ways, this cake has a lot in common with truly my favorite recipe of all time, the poppy seed almond cake in Dessert Person, which is a, a family recipe. Oh, it's too hot. It's like a high fat, high sugar, high moisture cake. And it just keeps for so long, it's so good. This cake is the same way. So I'm gonna take some of my glaze and I have this kind of like sugary layer at the bottom, so make sure you're scooping that up as you go. And I'm just gonna brush some of this across the surface. And I, you can be generous because this is a lot of glaze. So feel free to really kind of layer it on there. So after just a few minutes of resting, you can see where the, the cake has pulled away from the sides. And this is ready to turn out. So I'm gonna let it kind of absorb that glaze on the top and then we're gonna glaze the rest of it. So obviously the cake is still really hot. So use like oven mitts or a towel, protect your hands. You just kind of set that right on top. And then when, when you're unmolding a bun cake, I like to kind of almost drop it on the counter like that to dislodge the cake if necessary. And you'll know as soon as you try to lift off the pan if the cake has been unmolded because you'll only get the weight of the pan and not the cake. Ooh. It's sort of like perfectly unmolded. I love how smooth and evenly golden the surface is and there was no sticking in the pan. So really good result. Mm. Typically I would do this on a sheet tray. I'm just gonna try it over a large plate and see. What you wanna do is get the rack on top of any kind of wide surface 
with a rim because we want to catch the drips. So now, even though the surface is so beautiful and kind of like perfectly smooth, I'm going to poke mo more holes and make sure you're poking not just like straight down, but into the sides and also in that sort of center hole as well. And this is going to encourage the glaze to be absorbed by the cake. It's going to kind of permeate all throughout the crumb. If you've ever glazed a cake before, it might seem like too much liquid, but it is the right amount. So now I'm going to take that glaze. I'm just going to paint it onto every exposed surface now. It's partly the olive oil that's giving it the glossiness, but it's also gaining so much texture from those tiny little granules of sugar. I also have some little pulpy bits, which I like to apply to the cake as well. So I've used all the glaze. And then of course I have all of these drips underneath and I wanna reapply those to the cake. So you can just kind of use your pastry brush to pick that up and paint it over the cake again. And ideally this should cool completely before you slice it because as it cools, you're just gonna get the best texture in the final cake. I'm gonna let it cool on the rack and then once it's cooled, I'm going to get it onto a serving platter and then we're gonna taste it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. Use a serrated knife, that will help you just cut a nice, smooth slice. You can see how it moves, like this is just such a tender cake. And it has the most beautiful, perfectly even, sort of finely textured crumb, which I really, really love. You can see how shiny the exterior is. Ooh, so lemony. Look at how beautiful that interior is. It's still so hot, you guys. This cake, this cake is burning hot. Keep it covered on your countertop, and it's just gonna improve with time. So I'm gonna take a piece from maybe down here. It's just so tender and bouncy, and the crumb, I just love the texture of it. And I feel like you don't necessarily expect to get such a tender, nicely textured cake from just like using a hand mixer. But this, I've never had this cake not bake up perfectly. I feel like before I even taste it, I get the aroma of olive oil. Mm. And I just love how it has so much flavor from the fresh lemon juice and the fresh olive oil and the glaze. Plus you get that zest in there. It's really such an incredible combination of phenomenal texture and phenom phenomenal flavor. It's really good. Mm. It looks beautiful, but there's nothing fussy. I didn't have to like make any special decorations. It just looks like the kind of cake that I wanna share and that I wanna keep coming back to to like cut off another slice. It's dark outside and it's barely six o'clock. So when I'm feeling kind of like in the winter doldrums, this is the perfect kind of pick-me-up cake. It's so bright and like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like zippy. There's a great zippiness to it from all that lemon juice. So I hope you try it. I love bringing you recipes from us for dessert. It's like super simple stuff, really straightforward, but things are kind of like a little extra special. So we're gonna bring you more episodes. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.